There's many a night that I sat outside the Ripperville and looked for whatever it was that I saw there. You know, I know I saw something at the plantation. I just don't know what it was. There's something special on this property. There's a lot more than what meets the eye here. I feel a lot of tragedy. I always felt something calling me to come in there. He's roaming around this place. The energy is different up here. It is not a coincidence you keep getting drawn back to this property. I came here to get answers. Your soul remembers it. What? That's correct. Are you kidding me? I came here to find out. I came here to get answers. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Billy Ray Cyrus. We're in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And uh, when I come back to Tennessee, I come to the Ripa Villa. It's a real special place. Um, a lot of history there from the Civil War. When I first discovered the Ripa Villa, I was riding my motorcycle, saw the sign, and just attracted me as I need to go here. You know, I know I saw something at the plantation. I just don't know what it was. But I've always wondered, you know, who was that? How did that happen? I'm in Spring Hill, Tennessee. That is uh, 45 minutes right outside of uh, Nashville. And I'm on my way to meet with the one and only Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm very excited. He's quite the uh, country singer who's famous for his uh, song, Achy Breaky Heart, uh, Some Gave All. I'm headed to a plantation that Billy had a ghost sighting on, and he wants to know what this thing was that he saw. I do feel Billy Ray has a lot of spiritual gifts. Some people could see these things as gifts or curses. In um, 1994, my family moved to Thompson Station, Tennessee, which is just right outside of Spring Hill. And if you've never been to Middle Tennessee, it's quite a beautiful site. And I would love to go places and explore. So one day, I was riding my motorcycle, and I saw the Ripa Villa for the first time. It was the stereotypical southern plantation. Um, columns in the front, like a, a large farm. For some reason, I was drawn to it, so I walked up on the property. And there was just something really special there. You could feel it. And you could feel that something dramatic had happened there. You know, ever since that day, my kids always loved to go for late night drives to the Ripa Villa. We'd pull up, turn my truck off, roll the windows down, sit and look at it. It was just fun. 
during the summer of 2008. This one particular night, me and my little girl Noah uh, go for a drive. Noah would have been about eight years old at the time. It was a hot summer night. The stars were out. It was a perfect night. We pull up to the Ripa Villa and go up the driveway, and there was something different about it that night. All right. We turn the truck off, put the windows down. You hear, like, crickets and just a little bit of wind and the sound of nature and, and nothing else. And then all of a sudden, Noah goes, do you see that? Daddy, do you see that? Do you see that? And I looked, and there was this thing. It was coming out the side door, but the door didn't open. It was a very large black shadow of a very big man. It was like it was hovering, and it went to the edge of the porch and looked toward me and Noah. It had something in its hand. It was long, like a, like a rifle. By then, Noah is screaming, get out of here, get out of here. Go, Daddy, go. So I start my truck, grab the gear shift, slam it down, and punch it. It's gravel, so it spins out a little bit and moved on out of there. I wanted to know more, but it was obvious that wasn't the time to find out. Noah needed to leave, like, right then. We couldn't get out of there quick enough. We never dreamed that something like that would really happen, something unexplainable. And trust me, there's many a night that I go and still sit outside the Ripa Villa. I still look for whatever it was that Noah and I saw that night, but I've never seen it again since. I'll never forget it. On that given night, we might have got a little more than we bargained for. You know, I'm always looking for a moral to the story or a rhyme to the reason. And and uh, we'll just see uh, if there's a message here or something that I'm supposed to learn from this, then today's the day to learn. The one thing that keeps repeating itself in my mind on my way to meet with Billy is I just keep getting flashes of soldiers. I wonder if Billy, I don't think he was ever in a war or in the army or the sol or soldier. I just need to find out his connection to soldiers, because I feel like there is one. There's a soldier that I'm seeing. He's in charge. He's the, the general, the commander. He shouts out the orders. And something happened to this guy. His leg. OK, no, he's in a wheelchair. He can't walk. He drinks a lot for the pain, a lot. Yeah, no, this, this commander's just not all there. I'm also getting a vision of this young soldier. And he's just staring at me with this rifle going across his body. I feel like he doesn't mind taking orders from the one in the wheelchair, the one in command. And I think it's going to have some kind of connection with Billy, <sighs> I feel the energy intensifying as, as by the minute, by the second. I feel a lot of tragedy where we're headed, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of death. There's a lot going on there, and I'm already feeling it. Oh, boy, here we are. Ripa Villa Plantation. Oh my God, look at this place. Okay. Let's 
This place looks kind of creepy. This is like a playground for ghosts. Yeah, there's, there's something. Getting visions of, of like, um, sick people. I see people with bandages around their heads. Uh, I see body parts inside these windows. I just, I just see like a lot of blood. Getting visions of, of like um, sick people. I see people with bandages around their heads. Uh, I see body parts inside. I just, I just see like a lot of blood. This is not anything I expected. Billy better get here pretty quick. I don't know a lot about um, psychic mediums, but I will say well, I'm just a little bit skeptical. But I'm anxious to see what she feels, you know? I, I know there's something special at this house. There's something special on this property. It's beautiful, but spooky. <laughs> It kind of calls you, in a way. Hi, hey Kim. there. Howdy, How you cowboy. Doing? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Billy Ray Cyrus. How do you like Ripa Villa? Boy, it's uh -huh. it's interesting to say the least. I bet you're you feel a lot here. How'd you know? How could you not? I want to tell you how I work. Mm. I like to get things organically and clean. But you can respond if I hit on something that you want to know more about or that you you can validate. Perfect. Everything I'm seeing, hearing, and feeling, I will share with you. But I want you to do the same with me. Mm. Obviously, you had something happened here that stuck with you. How long yeah. ago was that about? The summer of 2008. Oh, 2008, OK. Yeah. You know, I saw something. I'm hungry to learn about what happened here. OK. Like, How did you find this place? I, I was on a motorcycle by right. myself the first time I came here. And I, I read about it on the road. And then I pulled in. And as soon as I stopped and walked on this ground, I knew it was sacred ground. Have you been inside? I've never took the tour and been inside and walked around. For some reason, I just like to be here at closing time and just walk around the yard. What is it about this place that you come at night? It's like I'm going home in some crazy way. Wow, really? Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things about this place that I picked up in the car. I did pick up Civil War very strongly. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the wheelchair, he was a soldier. He was in charge. I saw this man with a whiskey bottle, and I picked up on a younger soldier who was taking direction from this alcoholic soldier. I just got cold chills, because there was this general that stayed here, General Hood. This and building? Uh-huh. OK. Yeah. I wonder if that's the man I saw. Do, do you know anything about him having his leg amputated? Yes, this is true. He was on morphine and tremendous amounts of alcohol. How do you know about that? I'm just curious. I studied it. I read about it. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you are what people in my field call an empath. Do you know what that is? No. So it's like when you're with others, like when someone's hurting, you're hurting. You may have just nailed something for me, because my songs, when I write a song, I don't even, I don't, I don't sit down and say I'm going to write a song. My songs just come from somewhere. For instance, the song Some Gave All, it's about a Vietnam veteran. And I met a Vietnam veteran one night at a little club. I was playing in Huntington, West Virginia in 1989. And 
driving home that night, I wrote a song about him. Did you ever feel compelled at any point to be a soldier? Uh, I, in some ways, I've, I've been to two war zones, Afghanistan and Iraq. Only I didn't carry a gun, I carried my guitar. There's something more than, than what meets the eye as to why you're drawn here. Something's calling you in. You ready to go in? Um, it can be a little frightening for me, to be honest. Oh. Truly, mm -hmm. because I never know what I'm walking into. All right, well, you do your thing, and I'll just let me know if you need me. I'll be out here. No, you won't. <laughs> You'll be right with me. Go you on, ready to go. go in? Yeah, I'm ready. Wow. There's a lot of energy here. How does it feel? It feels kind of odd. I don't know. Where are you going? I just want to look around. Why don't we go into that back room? I'm feeling very drawn to that Anywhere light. Anywhere you want to go. Are you OK? What are you thinking? Um. Tell me, what are you feeling? Because I, I could tell you're pacing. You, you feel like you, you, you're not oh, settled. Don't think I'm being distant. It's just I'm, I am. I see I'm, you pacing. I'm emotional. So it, when, That's a good thing to be in. Well, it is, it is, when it's good. But, no, then, but you're feeling on edge. I want you to be real. I feel really anxious in this house. That's the you know part I, mean? I want to talk about. Oh, OK. I, I want to talk about why, why you're feeling edgy. I just want to start from the beginning. OK. This room gave me a, a chill. Yeah. I, I see, like, gurneys set up, like beds in here at one time. I'm seeing white walls with a lot of blood. This room gave me a, a chill. Yeah. I, I see like gurneys set up, like beds in here at one time. I'm seeing white walls with a lot of blood all over the walls, all over the floor. And I hear soldiers screaming in pain because of their wounds. It had to have been turned into the hospital during the war. That's, yeah, that's definitely what happened in this house. Well, it was immediately a hospital after the Battle of Franklin. Oh, really? Let's go that way. I, I keep picking up the younger soldier, and he's roaming around this place aimlessly, mm. looking for some kind of closure. I feel like his name is uh, Alfred. Why don't we go into that back room? I'm feeling very drawn that way. All right. Wait a minute. You know what I just got a vision of? I just got a vision of, of the young soldier, Alfred. Just like way, the way you're looking out the window. He was looking out the window, like looking for the enemy to see if he was safe. It was the freakiest thing that just happened when you just walked up to the window. I just saw that soldier doing the same exact thing. I feel like he keeps watch by this window. Did you ever look inside the windows? Yeah, always. Did you ever see anything? No, but I always felt like something calling me to come in there. One night I but came so up those said. stairs and I looked through this window. I had gone way farther than I had ever gone late right. at night. And I came all the way up those stairs and I was about to touch the door going, Cyrus, you're not supposed to be here. And like that, like something inside was just like going, 
come on in. Just turn that door right there. It's mm -hmm. going to open. Mm -hmm. And right as I, I was looking at it, and I thought, you better get out of here. And I turned, came down the stairs, went out. Sure enough, the police pulled up. <gasps> like, they was, like, waiting on me but at did, my truck. Did, did they confront you? We just talked. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did they want to know I why said, you were here? Yeah, they said, well, you know, I said, I just love this place. So let me just say this. There's something in this house that I feel is drawing you back. And you've even said it yourself. You feel home here. Realize that. Yes. We have to just keep going. OK, here we go. Now, here's the deal. This is what I feel. I feel as if there's not a coincidence you keep getting drawn back to this property. I feel like you were here. Do, do you believe that our soul can kind of just recycle itself? Like reincarnation? Yes. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's a huge possibility. Mm -hmm. You feel a certain draw here, but you don't know why. Your energy is telling me you've been here before in a past life, and your soul remembers it. Are you serious? This is what I'm sensing. We'll see where you were connected with General Hood or that younger soldier, Alfred, if at all. Hold on a second. Um, I'm, I'm kind of all of a sudden getting that. I just want to, I, I just want to tell you, I see that soldier going upstairs. We need to follow him. Let's go. The energy is different up here. Okay, wait a minute. I am feeling <gasps> that crib just freaked me out. There's no way that. Thing no, is it moved. You saw it too? Hell yeah, I saw it. I mean, I ain't no genius, but I know when a damn crib moves. I really did see it. It moved. Like it moved. And you saw it too. There's something freakishly going on in here. There's no way that thing No, it moved. moved. You saw it too? Hell yeah, I saw it. I mean, I ain't no genius, but I know when a damn crib moves. I really did see it. It moved. Like, it moved. And you saw it too? There's something freakishly going on in here. There's somebody coming through to me. It's a man, he's older. I think it's a family member. Who died of lung cancer? That would be my dad. OK. Who is Bo? That was, was that me when I was a little boy. It's still me. So did he call you Bo, too? Yeah, he was there the one that you... started Bo. So that's why I feel like I was hearing it. I, I kept hearing Bo, 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 Bo. Yeah. This guy yeah. has a lot of swag. Oh, my dad was the Southern Gospel Elvis of Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. Women with I beehive can... hairdos would come for miles. Really? To see my dad sing in them little Pentecostal churches. And I want to say one other thing Anything that he's saying. Anything you want to say. He wants you to connect more with your brother. I called my brother on the way here. But I bet your dad put that thought in your head. Probably. Because he says, I want you to Probably. connect to your brother. He's bringing someone else into the picture. Um, he's definitely modern military. You know this man. I feel like his name is James or Jim. What would be your response if I said to you the name James W. Ponder? You have tears in your eyes. Do you know who James W. Ponder is? I don't, but you have tears in your eyes. So that means something to you. Oh, yeah. Tell me. He was a soldier. Uh, see and that? And he had two little girls. Oh, man. And he was killed in Afghanistan. Oh. And uh, I sang at his funeral. 
Well, that's it. He and was a they soldier. told a story about how he loved the turkey hunt. And so when his wife gave me his dog tags, I hung them in a tree where all the turkeys live, in a tree on top of this hill. And his tags have hung there ever since. It's, that's all the validation I need. See that? You are the real deal. I appreciate that. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm being drawn into that bedroom. Let's go. Come on. I so feel drawn there. General Hood is here. Is there a sign here? Let's see if the sign says anything. General John Bell Hood slept in this bed. General Hood slept here. And that's what this says. Feel this vibration. Feel I it. Feel it from here. Do you think that's what I saw? Um. I was just told no, it wasn't him. Although he frequents this place quite a bit, he has a lot of regrets about how many lives were lost because of his decisions, his poor decisions, his decisions that were made while he was high on morphine and alcohol. In the afterlife, he has to, he has to you know, atone for, for these decisions and mistakes. Um, so I don't really particularly feel he crossed over. Um, I just got another vision of the young soldier, Alfred. He was one of General Hood's soldiers. And he wound up dying because of General Hood. And now he's stuck here. He wound up dying because of General Hood, and now he's stuck here. Well, I'm going to get to the bottom of how you're tied up with all of this. There's a huge connection with you. But first, we need to go to the place where you had your experience. Let's go. Let's go find out. I came here to find out. I came here to get answers. If you know the answer to this question, we must. Mm -hmm. Amazing grace. Oh, my God. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. me. Well, I, I once was. This is where it happened. I want to hear all about it. Oh my gosh, look at this rain. This is where it happened? Yeah. Well, whatever happened started up there. And somehow it hovered to about here. And then from this point, it just started going this way. Where were you? Right out there in the car. And then when it got to here, it like stopped, which was exactly in an eye view of me and Noah. Just in, like this. In the car right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. See? Yep. And like we're right there. This thing comes from here to here. And it's like a profile like this. It was holding either a sword or a rifle. I was thinking like, what is that? Yeah. And Noah screams, get out of here, Daddy. Get out of here. Do you see that? Do you see that? By then, tears are streaming down her face. She's going, go, Daddy, go. And by then, it, you know, I mean, it was serious. No, I, this and was... I'm thinking, is my daughter going to get hurt? Noah was scared to death, and we just went ahead. I, I went ahead and gave it the gas and left. OK, but this this is still here. I'm getting, I'm getting a huge sense of that young soldier, um, Alfred. I want to explain. The night that you drove here with your daughter, yeah, that's who you and your daughter saw that night. It was Alfred. Oh, my goodness. But wait, I'm also seeing another person. There was a brother. Um, I feel like um, I'm seeing, like, the name Henry. Henry 
was a soldier then, too. There is a Henry, and there is an Alfred, and they're brothers. And I see Henry and Alfred fighting. You have to hear me out. I'm hearing this you more than you even know. Oh, OK, good. Henry, Henry. Henry didn't follow the rules of General Hood. He didn't agree with him. So he stayed away. He deserted the battlefield. But Alfred died out there. And I see Henry, after Alfred died, crying over his body. He even dug a grave for him and buried him himself. Is it here? It's not far. It's really, it, I can't believe you're saying it. Because I distinctly remember walking in the field. Yeah. Thinking, man, something feels really sacred. I felt it so strong, I took my shoes off and my hat off. But I want to tell you, there's a little bit more to this story. I feel so strongly that you were Henry in that life, the older brother. What? That's correct. Are you kidding? There's a little bit more to this story. I feel so strongly that you were Henry in that life, the older brother. What? That's correct. Are you kidding me? You were Henry. And I need you to understand something. You didn't believe in that lifetime in death and killing people, but you had no choice to be part of this war. You will not- Wouldn't be the craziest thing? It's not crazy because you felt like you were home when you walked in here. Uh, Alfred is still looking for his brother. And he senses that you are Henry. Alfred recognizes your soul. It doesn't matter what you look like. He recognizes your soul. And so he's the one you saw and the one who's been drawing you into this home. This is what I'm picking up with. And I can't tell you the chills I have from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head right now. Everything is just resonating as truth. Remember earlier I was asking you about reincarnation? The soul retains a memory of every life it's ever lived because the journey of the soul is endless. And that's what that means. The soul continues on. Henry's guilt carried over into your life. Because he felt like he was responsible for Alfred. In a very big way. And it, a lot of that darkness that you carry stemmed from that life. I need to let that go, don't I? You so do. And that's why you're here today. You, you've been praying for redemption. You've been praying for peace. That's what I'm being told. You oh pray for peace. You told me. You sang for the troops. I wrote for the troops. You keep going back in this lifetime to some kind of military connection. You, you were drawn back here for this very answer. If this is the last piece of the puzzle, Billy, you found it. Because you, you, you ha you ha your heart's in the right place, Billy. And that's really the majority of what you need. You are the most, now, the most sincere, real person what One of the most I've ever met in my life. Yes, I'm praying for a purpose to be whatever it was that this soul was supposed to do. I believe that it was meant to be that you came into my life to help me figure things out. Us coming here, let me be really sincere and yes, thank you. Always be sincere. For taking the time to come here and allow me to go on this journey. And you allowed me to take a look at the past and put it together with today's present. And like you say, hopefully this will mean something toward that prayer that I always had when I bought a guitar and started a band and I prayed that God to find my purpose through my journey. Well, maybe this is all part of it. This is why you came back here. You were drawn back here. And Al I so hope you're right. And Alfred needs closure. How do I close it? I want to help him. Well, I want to talk to you in depth more about this. We'll go and sit down and chat? Yeah. Oh, wow. 
What well, a day. I'll tell you what. Um, it's one heck of a storm out there. Sure is. Let's talk about what happened here today. We had these two soldiers that fought the battles here. Henry. Henry and Alfred, they were brothers mm -hmm. under the leadership of General Hood. Henry did not follow the orders the way he should, but it saved his life by not doing so. So Alfred had to die unnecessarily, and Henry, the, his brother, tried to save him. Alfred has come back over and over to look for his brother. I see you very, very much that your soul was that brother, Henry. What you and your daughter saw was Alfred, your brother from that life. He knows your presence when you're here. I think so. I feel that. I'm telling him that you're not Henry in this lifetime, and he needs to go to the light and find peace. Absolutely. After getting to know you and and seeing your sincerity for one and your gift for the other, you have a gift, and I have. I'm. I've gone from possible skeptic to I'm a major believer in you, Kim. You were born with a gift, and thank you. I just went ahead and accepted that now, and I feel like really fortunate that you came into my life at a time when I was praying for purpose. And for me to find my purpose, I needed to understand the past. Exactly. It's why you're drawn here. It's why you want to know so much about this home. It's why you are constantly writing songs for soldiers. You're saluting soldiers. You feel for these soldiers. You've carried the scars long enough. And I feel that in that lifetime, you carried a gun. And in this lifetime, you're carrying a guitar. That's your weapon, Billy Ray Cyrus. That's why I wanted to meet you. I wanted to see if you had answers to some of these crazy questions. And what, you know, I'm look, that's all I'm looking for is truth. Did you, do you feel you found what you were looking for today? I think I did. I feel really good about today. I feel the same way. What are we gonna do? We have to hug. It was great. It was amazing. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad that I did what I did today. I'll always feel a deep connection with this property. Even if today hadn't happened, I already felt like Ripavilla. It was a part of my life. And now, today, a hundredfold that. I always felt like something about me belonged in, inside here. And so today I get to come in here and walk around and feel. I think Kim is awesome. I was open-minded, looking for answers, you know, and excited about it, yet, you know, it's probably fair to use the word skeptical too, but I know that she is the real deal and I wouldn't trade today for anything. This could be a new beginning for me. You know, with every ending is a new beginning. Looking back, when we met Billy, he wanted to uncover the truth about a paranormal sighting he had at a plantation near his home in Tennessee. While exploring the home, we discovered Alfred, the trapped spirit of a Civil War soldier who died in a battle and who was stuck there searching for his brother Henry, also a soldier who survived the war. We found out that the reason Billy felt so connected to this location was because he was Henry, Alfred's brother in a past life. Oftentimes, trapped spirits seek out their loved ones from a previous life looking for closure. And as a result, like Billy, many of us feel a strong connection to certain people, places, or things. And if we are open enough to explore these past life memories, we can move forward in our current life with clarity and purpose.